Hi there, it's John Pushkar. I'm here today with another episode trying to keep you safe in the world of fuels and fired equipment. Today's episode is very special. Today's episode is a tough one to produce because I've known people who have had serious burn injuries. Today's episode is all about that dramatic event that you hope would never happen to any of us. Burns are amongst the worst types of injuries that a human being could ever have. They're painful, the outcome's usually not very good, but it's a topic that I really want to cover because you see, we're all immersed in PPE, right? We're all immersed in stories. We all make bargains with ourselves and we take risks every day whenever we operate the kind of equipment we operate. Whenever we open steam valves, whenever we start a piece of equipment, we understand what might happen. But we think never to us. I've got a friend of a friend of a guy that retired 20 years ago and I heard that happen to him, but it won't happen to me. Now, I really probably should use gloves to open that steam valve, but yeah, they're back at my workstation. I don't feel like walking back there again. I've opened that valve 100 times, nothing's ever happened. I'll be good with 101. Today I want to talk to you about what actually happens when you get a burn. How long does it take? What are the different types of burns? What are the consequences? What are the important factors in your recovery? A little bit of a warning. There are some pictures that are going to be shown that are, are very tough to look at. I'm warning you in advance. Um, this is hard for me to look at. It's hard for me to think about that this could actually be part of a human being. So I apologize. If it scares the hell out of you, that's okay too. What I really want to do coming out of this is I want to change that little risk calculation in your head moving forward. And I want you to understand what truly can happen. And if I've made you a little more squeamish, and if I've made you a little more careful, I've achieved my objective. Today, I have the honor and the privilege to have a few minutes with one of the world's foremost people that is immersed daily in the world of burns and traumatic burn injuries. A man whose inventions have literally saved thousands of lives all over the world, and he's changed the outcome and made life more pleasant in the lives of tens of thousands of people. I've got a person who's won one of the most prestigious awards from the American Burn Association. I have Dr. Aubrey Woodruff with us today. Dr. Woodruff received his PhD from UCLA in 1970, and he's received numerous patents for his artificial skin products that are, again, now in widespread use throughout the world. Dr. Woodruff, it's a pleasure to have a few minutes of your time. Thank you again, sir, for agreeing to help change the lives of the folks who watch my videos. Dr. Woodruff, I understand congratulations are in order. You've recently received the Lifetime Achievement Award. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <clears throat> yes, this is, uh, I think, as important to me as receiving a PhD degree. Uh, the American Burn Association awarded me the Harvey Stewart Allen Distinguished Service Award at this year's annual meeting. It's, uh, it's hard to put words as to what something means to you after you've worked for a long time, but this is a great honor and I'm very proud of it. As you should be. So Dr. Woodruff, can you give us an idea of how do burns happen? What actually happens physically within the skin? And yesterday in our pre-meeting discussions, you were talking about the different levels and types of burns. If you don't mind, I'm gonna share some screen with you here too. You gave me some pictures that you'd like to speak from and I'm gonna grab those here. Okay, so folks, I'm gonna show a series of slides here that Dr. Woodruff's gonna to speak to. And the first one is a cross-section, kind of a 3D view 
of some skin. Can you give us an idea again about what's going on there when you get burned? Okay, uh, so thank you, John. It's, it's my honor and pleasure to support you in your effort. We, we have a lot of common goals. So from this slide, what I'd like to do is uh, describe what skin is, what skin does, and then what happens with different levels of damage, uh, superficial, partial thickness, full thickness burn. So skin is very complicated. It's the largest organ of our body, and it has several important, uh, very critical functions. Its structure uh, is complex. Uh, the area that is the biggest concern to burn surgeons is the viability of the dermal layer and the dermis layer. So if you get a, sun, a bad sunburn, the epidermal layer is damaged. It's going to heal up in a day or so. It's going to swell. It's going to be painful. Uh, but there's no long-term consequence uh, to that, except maybe use a little more sunscreen next time. Um, a partial thickness burn will be damaged generally through the epidermis in, and partially into the dermis. Um, and I'm and sure that, it's here on the left-hand side. So here down to this purple material would be the epidermis. And then this whole much bigger chunk is the dermis, right? Correct, correct. So in a partial thickness injury, most, most of the epidermis would, would have been seriously damaged, but there are epidermal uh, components down in the hair follicles and those will migrate and heal that wound if properly managed. Uh, the dermal components, uh, if the damage goes through that, then we're talking about a really, really serious burn we call it a third degree burn or worse. And that burn will have to have all of the necrotic tissue. That's the burn tissue. We call it the fried egg, excised and removed and then protected with a temporary skin substitute until it's appropriate to do an autograph procedure where they take skin from a part of the body that's not burned, a split thickness skin section will be taken and then placed over the burned area and once that adheres and becomes uh, growing, grown in, then the wound is considered definitively closed. So in the case of a lot of steam systems used in industry or in power plants, we're talking four, five, 600 degree steam. I'm guessing that with, within seconds of having some of that blowing at you, you're into a third degree burn. Yes, uh, it does not take very long when the temperature is that hot. Uh, and this skin is very vulnerable when it, when it gets exposed to the heat, it, it's gonna peel and damage could go deeper in a very short period of time. And speaking of time, one of the things we spoke about yesterday was that it's very important that you very quickly get to a burn center. We talked about the fact that these aren't on every corner. In fact, I wanna to go to a slide here that shows burn center locations. We talked about this a little bit. Um, what's the importance of getting beyond a regular hospital and getting to one of these facilities? What does that do for you? Uh, the burn centers uh, are places where there's a team of people trained to take care of burn patients. There's multidisciplinary uh, occupational therapists, nursing care, expert surgeons uh, that know how to excise and prepare burns for autographing. There's about 115 or so in the United States. There's about, um, most of them are verified burn centers. They're generally located where population is dense, but as you can see, depending on where you're at, you may or may not be close to a burn center. But if you get a serious burn, uh, you should be in a burn center. 
once a burn happens, uh, bacteria present in the wound will begin proliferating. And if not taken care of in a short period of time, could involve systemic uh, sepsis and possibly organ failure and possibly death. So it is very important to get good care. And this is where you get the best care in the world at a US burn center. So one of the things we talked about yesterday as well was um, not that it's not that there are better or worse places to get burned. It's all horrible, right? But right. you mentioned that hands and face are especially bad. Can you tell us about why those are especially bad places to be burned? Well, your identity is associated with your face. And once the image of your face is dramatically changed, uh, it's difficult psychologically to adapt to that new image. Uh, and sometimes people that have experienced serious burns of the face actually become hermits. They do not want to see any other human being. So obviously their lifestyle is uh, dramatically changed. The other serious uh, place to get burned is your hands. People don't realize how important their hands are to get dressed, to shave, <laughs> to brush your teeth, uh, to go to the bathroom, uh, if you just take a minute and imagine not having hands and doing any simple function, uh, it's, it's a huge disadvantage not to have hands. So the function of the hands is critical. The, the image of the face is psychologically important. So these are very high level uh, areas for attention from experts when someone gets burned. So again, that's another reason to get you to a burn center quickly is you got a, a better chance of not having permanent scarring, a better chance of not losing range of motion. Yes, yes. Over the last five decades, the morbidity and mortality from burns has been significantly reduced. Uh, and and we, we have to thank organizations like the American Burn Association for that. So if someone has these injuries of that level, it's certainly to their image to get to people that are best trained to take care of it. And it's a team of people that are trained to take care of that type of injury. Gotcha. And while we're on the topic of hands, you provided some slides that, uh, well, first let's talk about the product that you've become okay. famous for, that your gift to the world here, <clears throat> how okay. that gift works and why this is very important. Okay, so we'll, we'll focus on the right picture first. It's a scanning electron mi uh, micrograph of a cross section of the temporary scan substitute that I invented. The very top layer and you're looking at that edge of that top layer is a very thin, state-of-the-art thin silicone membrane. That membrane functions like a membrane oxygenator. It breathes, it lets oxygen in, it lets carbon dioxide out. What's physically bonded to the, the silicone membrane are the strong cables of nylon knitted in a special way and bio-coated so that they interact with the tissue itself to secure adherence, provide strength and stretchability uh, to the product. So the engineers in your group will probably easily re relate to the three-dimensional structure and function of, of the product. Then switching to the left side of the, the uh, screen is a cross-section of skin. In this case, the epidermis has been damaged and removed, part of the dermis have been uh, damaged and removed. And you can see the knitted nylon components bio-coated interacting with the wound and the silicone membrane oxygenator resting on the top. This protects uh, the wound uh, from exogenous bacteria, 
it stops the pain by eliminating air, direct air interface with damaged nerves. And it, it provides a moist, but not wet healing environment for that wound to heal. It will heal if it's partial thickness and, uh, and that will take about 10 days to two weeks, depending on the depth of the partial thickness injury. Or if it's an ex a full thickness injury, it will protect that tissue until it's appropriate for the surgeon to do an autograft procedure. So let me make sure I got this straight. So the reality of getting burned and showing up in a burn center is that if it's very bad at all, you will be dealing with skin replacement somehow. Yes. And, and if it's not your own skin, um, which then I'm thinking also leads to longer recovery time, right? Because now where they've harvested, yes. that needs to heal. And, yes. and during the time you're there, you're just kind of really hoping like heck that things don't get infected because it seems like you're very vulnerable and that's one of the things that can go bad. What, what are some other outcomes that aren't ideal that people experience from severe burns? Well, you've hit on some of the key ones already. Um, infection complication is very serious if they can't get it under control. As, as I mentioned, it could lead to multi-organ organ failure and death. So it's very critical to get uh, infection under control. Uh, the process of healing itself involves multiple surgeries. Uh, you can't excise everything at once, but gotta take the patient to the operating room excise what they can of a third degree burn, get rid of the ester, we call it uh, the fried egg, get down to viable tissue, protect that with the, a temporary skin graft, uh, a skin substitute or cadaver skin. And then after uh, another week, they may take them back to the operating room, take the cadaver skin off or the permiderm off and then uh, do a skin grab on part of the body that's not burned and then definitively close that third degree wound. This process repeats until all wounds are uh, definitively closed. So you've just bought yourself a bunch of surgeries. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. And just uh, a couple more slides I wanted to share with the group here. Um, can you tell us about what's going on here? What are we looking at? What we have done here is create solutions to difficult parts of the body to manage. Uh, the hand, hand burn, uh, I'll talk a little more about that with some other pictures that we're gonna show you, or an ankle and foot burn. If you could uh, get rid of the blister if it's a partial thickness burn and close it with uh, a device like we've invented. Number one, the advantage is the pain will be uh, significantly reduced. There'll be less narcotics required by the patient. They will heal quicker. They'll be able to get full range of motion quicker. Uh, so these we have patented and, and shown uh, that work. And I'll show you some more serious burns later in this presentation. Okay, we can get there now. Okay. This is a somewhat recent one you were telling me. This patient was burned approximately two weeks ago. This is the first use of the permiderm uh, glove. Uh, this uh, patient has the permiderm glove on right now. This is a full thickness injury. It's been excised. You can see pink viable tissue present. And that patient was autographed last Friday. And I'm I sorry, should autographed means what? Autographed means uh, the permiderm glove will be taken down off and he, the patient and the surgeon will see viable pink tissue that's vascularized, which will accept an autograph, which is a split thickness skin graft from a part of the body not burned. They do that, that's a separate operation. 
it, it, well, it's done in the same operation. And then they take that split thickness skin graft and apply it to the burned area and protect that until it adheres and definitively grows into the wound and closes the wound. And that, that is completion. I'm really sorry that I didn't warn some of the folks about how graphic some of this is. Uh, if that bothers you, that's okay with me. If it makes you think harder about wearing gloves the next time you go open a steam valve, uh, I think we've achieved our objective here because this is not a made up Hollywood picture. This is the real suffering someone's going through with their hand burned. This is why you need to be careful with PPE and why you need to seriously consider some of the risks that you're taking. Um, I want to show you then. Let, before, you, before you leave, yes, John, let me just please. make one, one comment. Everything John said is spot on. Imagine if you had this burn to your face. So meant, earlier we talked about two critical areas, face, your image that you project. If that happens to you, you're no longer going to be able to project, project the image you used to have. And if you had a hand burn like this, unless you get expert treatment, you're not going to have full function of your hand. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, please. No, that, that's, that's the message, folks, loud and clear. And here's why, again, it's important to get to a burn center quickly. Here's the kind of miracle that happens from Dr. Aubrey Woodruff's product. If you look at the hand picture above, you see it's, uh, it's just horrible looking. Uh, none of us should ever have to go through something like that. And this is the same gentleman in the picture below where you're seeing kind of a normal looking hand. Can you tell us anything about the, the before and after here? So the good news is most burns are partial thickness as opposed to full thickness. So what that means is there's significant amount of the dermis left and there are epidermal components in the hair follicles left. So if that uh, burn is treated properly, closed after getting rid of all the blister and s chart, it will heal normally in 10 to 14 days. And this is exactly what that hand burn is. It's partial thickness injury, very painful until you close it with permiderm. But then the patient uh, um, day one after surgery can begin rehab, moving his fingers until he has full range of motion. And you can see that this patient not only has uh, great aesthetics, but also you can assume that he has full range, full range of motion. So this, this is a typical result with expert treatment. Thank you. So Dr. Woodruff, we all have stories about things that inspired us. I know you're a very inspired and driven man. I know you've dedicated your life to trying to help people. Uh, you told me a little bit of a story yesterday about a colleague that you had met sort of unexpectedly, and it was very inspiring to you. Would you mind sharing that with us? Uh, I'd be happy to. Um, the experience was uh, I did my uh, undergraduate work at San Diego State College in chemistry and biochemistry. And uh, a fellow student in one of the labs I was in, organic chemistry lab, I uh, got to know him uh, pretty well. And then I went on to UCLA and completed my PhD degree. And then later got involved <clears throat> working with uh, a burn surgeon, <clears throat> excuse me, by the name of uh, Robert Bartlett at UCI in 1972. And he inspired me to start working more on creating uh, skin substitutes, which I, which I did. About 1975, I was doing rounds at the UCI Burn Center with Dr. Bartlett and staff. And we go you know, patient to patient and uh, he describes the situation and what they're doing. 
So we went to this one room and this patient was completely wrapped in gauze. And the only thing that was visible was eyes peeping out of, out of the gauze. And I'm sitting there with Dr. Bartlett and he, he Dr. Bartlett finished his spill and then, then the patient said, hi, Aubrey. I mean, it was, I was devastated because this is the guy that I knew healthy, bright, doing all these great, great things in college. And now his image and life is dramatically changed. So uh, something you'll never forget, hope never happens to any of you, but it did to me. And that was, I believe you told me as a result of uh, a chemical explosion, a chemical reaction in a lab? Exactly. He worked in an organic synthesis lab. There was an explosion. Damage was nearly instant, and he had a lot of full thickness burn. And uh, so his whole life was changed. Uh, he went to work nice, healthy, with a great uh, lifestyle. Went to the hospital, spent months in the hospital. His whole life has changed. Wow. And folks, you've heard it from one of the most distinguished people in this field from a gentleman who's literally saved thousands of lives and changed the lives of thousands and tens of thousands of people and continues to do so. Dr. Woodruff, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate the message you've communicated. You're welcome. It was my pleasure, John. Thank you. Hi, it's John Pushkar. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to know about more ways that I can help, you can check out my website at www.prescientts.com. There you'll find information about the Prescient Technical Services Online School, my book, Fuels and Combustion System Safety, What You Don't Know Can Kill You, and also about some of the consulting projects that I've been providing to clients for the past 40 years. Things like implementing inspection and testing programs on a corporate enterprise-wide level, things like reviewing and commenting on capital equipment purchases that involve combustion equipment, and even being a legal expert if things go really wrong. Once again, thank you for attending, and remember, be safe out there. The life you save, it just might be yours.